Hi, I'm Amanda Morrell, Personal Finance Editor with Interest.co.nz, and welcome to another one of our Double Shot interviews. I'm joined today by the Chief Executive of the New Zealand Mint, Simon Harding. Welcome, Simon. Thank you, Amanda. So Simon's here to talk to us about uh, several things in the gold sphere. Um, now, there's been lots, so much happening in gold the last few years over the global financial crisis. Now, earlier this week, we held Goldman Sachs declare it the end of the bull market for gold. Then uh, no sooner have those words been uttered, we hear Morgan Stanley come out and say it's going to be the best commodity of 2013. A couple of weeks back, we had um, a specialist gold fund manager say he thought we'd see gold hit $7,000 U.S. an ounce at the peak of its cycle. So nobody has a crystal ball, no. but I'm interested to hear your views about all this. Well, um, yeah, I mean, we have to be very careful predicting the future, especially since it's so close. Um, I mean, there was a lot of talk of gold hitting 2000 U.S. dollars by the end of the year, and um, the countdown to that is well and truly beginning. Um, but what we can be sure of is, is gold tends to like uncertain times, and we certainly are looking at uncertain times, with the US economy looking at the uh, fiscal cliff, with the Bank of England continuing with quantum easing programs, and the uncertainty of the Eurozone. There's uh, certainly a flight to, in some sectors, to the certainty of commodity investment, and gold ranks up there with commodity investors. So all this doom and gloom out there has certainly been good, been good for your business. It's doubled, I understand, over the last three years. Who's driving all this demand? Yeah, there's, there's two aspects to it. New Zealand investors are becoming um, a little bit more sophisticated. New Zealand traditionally doesn't have a, a bullion investment culture, and that's gradually changing. Obviously, been, there's a series of people who have been um, adversely affected by, you know, first of all, the share market crash some years ago, and then most recently the finance company crash, and then what's next. So the absolute certainty of gold as an investment has its attraction. We're also perceived as a safe haven for overseas investors. We have large US and European clients who deliberately choose New Zealand Mint as an investment vehicle because we're perceived as being politically stable, we're geographically remote, and that's attractive to people looking for a bolt hole. And so uh, would you say it's uh, international investment uh, that has dri driven your no, increased it's business? It's a bit of both. It's a bit of both. Um, both. Both strands of our business have increased dramatically. Um, it's now not uncommon for for mum and dad investors to, to turn up and make a take a bullion position. Okay. Now, you're certainly not in the advice business, but um, mm. the, you generally hear that people should hold between 5 or 10% of their portfolio in gold. Do you think, given current conditions, maybe that's uh, too modest uh, an allocation? Oh, I think that, that's a conservative portfolio. Um, I think there are a few advisors, and I certainly wouldn't be one of them, and I'm not an advisor, who would recommend they take all your investment in gold or anywhere else for that matter. But... Um, Many people would view it as part of a conservative portfolio to hold a small percentage in gold or silver. Okay. Uh, you've mentioned silver now, so let's get into that. Um, yeah. to, have you seen a, a similar increase in popularity with the silver bullion on your side of things? In terms of, of volume, yes, although silver has been more volatile. It's been, been up and down a lot, and also silver has a, um, a much larger industrial use, which it tends to affect the pricing. Uh, I mean, it's an interesting, interesting fact that despite New Zealand's um, constant love affair with residential property, gold has actually outperformed residential property in New Zealand over the last 10 years. Yeah, that's quite interesting. Yeah. yeah. Now, um, when it comes to um, advising clients, you, you're not in the advice business at all. Are, are, do you think most investors are coming into this um, of their own accord or are they getting proper advice out there? I think um, there's a mixture. I think most of the investors who come to us have made up their mind to invest in gold or silver, so mm -hmm. they're seeking advice about how to do that, not whether or not they should do that. Okay. So where are you sourcing most of your gold? Um, gold's a homogenous commodity. Um, we, our supply chains tend to be Switzerland, South Africa and Australia. Mm -hmm. Most of New Zealand's gold production is um, refined offshore, and gold's a, a very homogenous commodity commodity, so any one of these coins probably contains an element of gold from biblical times, element of time, you know, it's from the 16th century, potentially from the Holocaust, potentially it could have been dug out of the ground a year ago. So once it's, once it's refined and mixed, it becomes a, a, um, an untraceable commodity in terms of its origin. Oh, a few years back when I was doing a story on gold, I talked to somebody from New Zealand Mint and they said there was a bit of um, a, quite a wait actually because of the growing interest. Are you having any issues with supply at the moment? Um, no, we, we can get supply of, um, of gold almost. We, we have a stock on hand, and if you have a specialist requirement or a, 
or a large-scale requirement, we can facilitate that generally within a few weeks. Okay. Now, one of the items that has been a bit of a hot seller is your Pacific Sovereign, which you've brought in for me here. I don't know if uh, our viewers will be able to see it through the reflection. Mm -hmm. But um, tell me about this product, because this is um, going to be a bit of a premium soon, because you're, you're taking it off the market? Yes. Well, this is our Pacific Sovereign, which is um, legal tender in Fiji. I think it says a 200 Fijian dollar value. Um, and that's been a New Zealand product for the last five years. However, a German um, coin house has, built, has um, undertaken to buy the entire mintage for the next five years. So unfortunately um, for our domestic consumers, um, buying a new 2013 Pacific Sovereign and beyond won't be possible unless they're doing it through Hamburg. Well, and so what's that going to do to the um, existing price of these? Is it going to raise their value? Potentially. It'll have a rarity value as well as its um, intrinsic value in terms of one ounce of, of pure gold. But um, consumers need not worry because we have a new product, a new Fijian product. Yes, as well. I was going to get to that. So um, tell us about now. Mm. I'll hold it up again. I don't know if people have seen this. Is a Fiji double taku, beautiful <laughs> gold, uh, solid gold, one ounce coin that you'll be coming out with next week. Next week, right? yes, yeah. that's a um, that's another legal tender bullion product. So that's legal tender in Fiji. Not that I'd suggest you spend it in Fiji for two hundred dollars because its gold values have more than ten times that. Um, it's a fairly unique, it's a very attractive coin. It's got two takus. A taku is an endangered um, Fijian um, turtle. So that's our, our double taku program. Um, and we've had a lot of interest in that, especially for Europe. And so that'll be um, selling around the, what, $2,300 mark? Yeah, and the, it, it, obviously, um, it obviously moves with the daily gold price. But yeah, there's a, there's a premium over gold, um, over the core gold price. So curious to know, what is your most popular selling gold product at New Zealand Mint? Well, our, our most popular product is this um, indigenous New Zealand Mint product is the Golden Kiwi. <laughs> and yeah. um, is that because it's an iconic sort yeah, of New it's Zealand? Yeah, it is an yeah. iconic New Zealand um, symbol. And uh, I think many of our, our local investors like the idea of a, a, New Zealand, um, a New Zealand brand and a New Zealand icon on their bullion. So that's mm. by far our most product, common product. Mm, interesting. So there's been lots happening. Um, three years from now, do you, where do you expect to see your business? You uh, we're, we're on a growth trajectory. We're investing in, in new people, new systems, um, and uh, we're really excited about the future. Excellent. Simon Harding mm. from the New Zealand Met, thank you very much for join us. And um, the uh, Fijian Taku will be going on sale next week, and uh, maybe you could put it on your Christmas list. I think I'll be uh, telling Santa what I would like. <laughs> thank you very much, Simon. Thank you, Amanda. I'm Amanda Morrell, personal finance editor with interest.co.nz.